My next guest, the only man I know who sometimes looks r sillier than I do, uh, he was famous as a sewer cleaner for many years, uh, absolutely hilarious on The Honeymooners, a superb mimic and actor. Right now he's at the Eugene O'Neill Theater in New York in The Prisoner of Second Avenue, but if you can't get there, if you're too far away from New York, will you welcome him here now, Mr. Art Carney. <laughs> You move so beautifully, it's like a Nijinsky or something. I, I don't know. Uh, you know what it feels like to spend a half your life in water. <laughs> That's right, you've been. Lloyd Bridget just called. Oh, he did? Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Is he suing me for. I'm a little shaken up by that. The funny thing was, I couldn't stay down in the tank, and I couldn't hear whether anyone could hear or not, and I couldn't hear the audience. I didn't yeah. know if they were laughing or booing or leaving no, or what they were they doing. Were but that was. I'm uh, not underwater, and I can't hear the audience because I, I have a little hearing problem, so. You do? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, oh, yes, I, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Never mind that. You know, the last time I saw you, yes, uh, we had in a co the, uh, we had coffee. coffee shop in the Beverly Hills Hotel. That's right. I look, and there's Art Carney having coffee right, right next to me. And our conversation was uh, as brilliant on my end as, as it's going to be tonight. I am so nervous and so scared whenever I have to appear on these shows, really. That's right. Once I you came so on this, right. once you came on with false teeth and a, and a wig and all, because you said I'd I go on. I them in the suitcase in case I have to use them again. <laughs> You're kidding. There is no reason for me to bring in that suitcase, except I don't like bulges in my pockets. <laughs> and you don't want to carry a purse, and so no, you carry. No, my greeting glasses. You're kidding. What else? The original Ed Norton hat. What's that, Ed? Let me see it. Put it on. Nail file. See, I look like Humphrey Bogart in it. Yeah. What, why do you have a nail file? Huh? Because it's too heavy. <laughs> oh, oh, it put these on. What is this? Wait, I can't, I can't put them on with my Ed Norton hat. It's like two ice cubes in a rim here. I don't. <laughs> wow. <laughs> where are you? It's Tom, brother. <laughs> Say, where should we go and have some fun? <laughs> Oh. This would give you a terrific headache to yeah, wear those, do. don't they? they do. uh, that's they do. A, supposed to be a problem with actors who don't wear glasses who wear them acting because they, you, right. get, you get dizzy on stage and don't know where you are. That's right. That's Did you right. have false teeth in a moment ago or was mm -hmm. my, my imagination? No, those were the I, uppers. I, I honestly couldn't see through the glasses. No, those were the uppers. Here are the lowers. These were lowers, see? <laughs> they do? Yeah. <laughs> These are the uh, guys that say, uh, well, uh, how much is that? Well, $55. $55. <laughs> 55. Yeah, P-I-P-T-Y, $55. How do you say Mary Mary? And Mary the... Mary. Oh, it works with Mary Mary, oh, but sure. 55 is hard. Well, no, anything. Yeah. Are those made by a dentist, and are they Yeah, my brother. Here? Yeah. <laughs> really? Those are your brother's teeth? Yeah. No, he made them. Oh, he's a dentist. <laughs> oh, yeah. But he didn't say $55 or anything. Yeah, he gets 55 cents for me. What else you got? That's a hearing aid. I'm not using it today. Here's the script. I'm still learning my lines from Prisoner of Second Avenue. But you're already in it. Carmine DeSapio. <laughs> <laughs> Roosevelt glasses. Wait, wait, wait. You're Who's not going right? to get past the Roosevelt glasses so easily. A clean letter I got in here someplace. <laughs> put the, could you put the Roosevelt glasses on for just if a second? If you take off that hat, I will. Oh, I forgot I had it on. Is this Ed Norton's original hat? That really That's ought to be one. in a museum. I bought that in Mount Vernon, New York in about, uh, I don't know, 1934, 1935 for $5, oh. and it just uh, kicked around the house, and that's it. That is it. Show how, how, did it, it how did Ed arrange it on his head? Hmm? How, how, did, how did you wear it as Ed? You put it Ed? like that. Yeah. And you put it like that. You put it down. And that's it. It's Ed Norton. Huh? Ed Norton. Not a class, huh? <laughs> You want to put the Roosevelt glasses on before me? Yeah. Are they, they look huh? like a valuable old pair of glasses. Yeah, those are the pince nez. I think are they actually just say. supposed to hold on by pinching? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of nice. Let me say right away. Oh, what? that's an English Roosevelt. Oh, that's they right. hurt. I could feel my eyes being pulled to the middle. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> People litter. Uh, there's no other way to hold them on. How do they, if you suddenly go, do they fall off? No. Sometimes, sometimes, but you can get a laugh that way. Hmm. It did depends he, on your bridge. 
Br the bridge of your nose. This bridge, I yeah. guess. Yeah. I don't know. Now I have not put them on. Them on what is it about them that makes you look like Roosevelt and I don't? I don't know. I. I don't look like Roosevelt. And unless I do Roosevelt, I may look a little bit like him. What if you were to, what if you were to say, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, and the year is 1944? Years ago, before the present administration took over, we were floundering in an effort to keep our heads above water. Today, we are still floundering. <laughs> But at least, at least we have learned how to breathe underwater. <laughs> right on the nose. One night, Charles Nelson Riley will be here, and Neil Simon, who wrote The Player in, and J.P. Morgan, and a man who um, has an incredible treasure story to tell, discovered uh, uh, underwater treasure by the ton, coins, uh, an old, um, I had some of the coins on the show the other night from the 18th century, and he, he really hit the jackpot. Uh, it's an incredible story. He'll be here tomorrow night. I like uh, any treasure story to me is is good. I like yeah. I like things like that. I pick them up. I can't put them down. Those treasure stories. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Say that really. When you did Roosevelt's voice, it really brought back. I was just a kid, but I can remember that voice coming over the radio in World War well, II I, and all like that. I guess I started doing Roosevelt when I was in high school. You know, yeah. in the late thirties, yeah. when he first went into office. You're probably a little older than I am. Hmm? I say you're probably a little older than I am. Just uh, just a smidgen. Yeah, this is all. This is all uh, makeup. I just, it's just for sympathy. <laughs> yeah. I toned this down for the play because uh, I'm supposed to be 50 in the play and the youngest member of the family, and uh, and I'm actually 53. And I just toned this down for the stage. And uh, you take three years off yourself. About yeah, yeah. give or take a few. You, sp you play a guy who goes berserk from all the problems of living That's in New York. Typecasting. Have you? Yeah. Oh, I've flipped many times. Have you? But sure. you always, you always come back. I always come back for more. <laughs> yeah. Were, you were in the war, World War, and don't, I was you, in the big one. You have an injury of some kind. Is it something you you can talk about? I've never heard you talk yeah. about it. Sure. What happened to you? Well, this uh, my right leg was hit by shrapnel, and yeah. uh, I was in the hospital for about nine months, and and I have this leg's a little, well, a little about an inch or so shorter than this one, and uh, when I'm out of work, I, I limp. Uh, when things are going fine, I don't limp. <laughs> Yeah, when things are slow, I limp. Just, just give him a job, then I stop limp limping once I get the job. You play on the sympathies of this yeah. heartless business. Right. Is it really that much shorter if you hold your legs out like that? Do they? Yeah, yeah, just so. Uh, but here's the way to tell it. Oh, I thought the you were The shortness is up here, see? Yeah. Shrapnel went in here. You lost a piece of muscle yeah, out right. of under here or something? So or? here's this knee and here's this knee. Uh -huh. I mean, like that. But I'm lucky. I got my leg. Yeah. I got yeah. my health. Well, we got your piano. Got a job. You got a piano. That's Would my you... first love. I come on these shows, I do the same things all the time, and I, you know, I do Roosevelt, and I play terrible <laughs> piano, but you let me do it. Yeah, it's always good to see you. Do, <laughs> do, do a bit of the piano, because I don't know anyone, your, your piano playing is as distinctive as Chico Marx's. <laughs> yes, and, uh, sure. Where's the piano? Well, here. wouldn't it be funny if we don't have no, one? Right over here. Oh, all we right. do. All right, come here, I'll show you where it is. Dick. Got to dry my hair anyway. Dick. Huh? Art Carney. Hey, you got a bench there. Hi, Bernie. How are you? Art Carney is the best USO piano player in the world. Uh, I, I'm actually the one. I'm, I'm no, first, first there was always a band. piano player. Look, the USOs is, during the this war. This is my first They all love. played like art. The piano. This is my first love. The piano, really. Waiter. <laughs>
good, really good. You've never, I don't think you've played here before. Was that, was he actually playing or is that dubbed? Watch and see what a chef does with a totem trash bag.